right, everybody. Thank you for coming. So, tonight's Captivating Conversations event, I'm going to try to make my speech really qu quick because uh, I'm a little hoarse, but um, tonight's Captivating Conversations event is on the Idaho uh, Mercy Train boxcar right over here. And uh, we are lucky enough to have a re uh, relationship with the uh, Idaho chapter of 40 and 8. Uh, and they have been volunteering uh, out here on Saturdays and then during special events out here in the shirt factory, keeping this space open so that guests can come out and not only see these historic vehicles, but also learn a little bit about them from an expert. And uh, so we're very fortunate to have you guys out here and um, thankful that you do as much as you do for us. We are um, standing in the Shirt Factory building. The Shirt Factory was part of the um, multi-purpose building, which is this entire ta uh, tan brown building that we're in. And we call it the Shirt Factory because this building was used for a plethora of different things at different times. So everything from a laundry to a shoe factory, shirt factory, a license plate factory or the tag plant, gyms, loafing recreation rooms, all that sort of stuff was in different parts of this building at different times. And when the site closed in 1973, became a museum shortly after in 1974, it's been a museum under the Idaho State Historical Society. Uh, ever since the site closed. And then in the interim, this uh, space that we're in was actually a transportation exhibit. Uh, there was an exhibit in here um, on historic vehicles, not just these few that we pulled back out, but uh, a whole bunch of other vehicles that are part of the Idaho State Historical Society collection. And the Mayor C Train's always kind of been the star of the show. Uh, it's the, the largest of the artifacts and, um, and definitely has uh, a lot of special ties to other parts of our agency. The, um, our uh, guest speakers are going to go over all of this stuff, but the Winged Victory statue that's at the Capitol building arrived in the Mercy train box or in the boxcar along with a lot of other artifacts. And unfortunately, you know, in the the years that that transportation exhibit was open, a lot of the artifacts that were uh, out here on display, paper, cloth artifacts, um, either went missing or were damaged just due to sunlight exposure and, uh, and this building not being nearly as uh, efficient weather-wise, uh, temperature-wise as, as it is now since we put in this uh, great HVAC system. And so, what we have left is, is still part of the collection, but just, uh, just uh, you know, kept a little more safe um, than we had it. But we're hoping that as this evolves, that we're able to continue bringing some things out for everyone to see. Captivating Conversations is a lecture series that we do every other month here at the site, and it's uh, always a wide range of topics. So last uh, time we did this, we had Chad Page, who's the director of um, the uh, current IDOC, the Idaho Department of Corrections. He's the chief of prisons, so the head of the wardens out there. And then we've had folks who were incarcerated here, you know, when it was, uh, when it was a, an active site. And we've had uh, just folks who have personal connections to the site as well as the artifacts that are housed out here. And so in a couple months, we're actually going to be uh, turning the mic over to one of our staff, uh, Camille's going to be talking about uh, work opportunities and uh, vocational opportunities that the site had for incarcerated men and women uh, during our next uh, Captivating Conversations event. And these are always free, so definitely keep an eye out, keep an ear out for those on our social media pages. Steve North is our main speaker tonight. He's the uh, commander of the 40 and 8 group. Uh, but I also have a special guest here. Karen Brown is uh, the daughter of Tom Brown. And Tom Brown was a guard here in, uh, in 1973, as well as a volunteer with the Idaho State Historical Society for many years. And kind of the, one of the jewels in his crown of, uh, of service here as a volunteer 
was that he spent over 400 hours restoring the boxcar after it was moved into the site. So again, they're gonna go through this history, but by that time, by the 1980s, this boxcar was in rough shape. It had been over near BSU and had been, had been abandoned, had been vandalized, and had been sort of left to rot. And so when the Idaho State Historical Society was able to move it out here, um, they found a great volunteer who was able to restore it. And uh, it's been looking as wonderful as it has ever since. So I'd like to bring Karen up here so uh, to make a couple remarks and then, uh, then we'll get rolling on some history. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, JC. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm going to be able to stay as long as the video is going, <laughs> but I'm going to try to do what I can. I am Tom Brown's daughter. He's one and only child. And uh, I know that the boxcar was his pride and joy. When he was asked to restore it back in the mid-'80s, he jumped at the chance. He, he didn't hesitate. He took it all the way down to the frame and rebuilt it board by board bit by bit. I come out in certain periods of the renovation of it, and just the work he was doing on it made me so proud to watch, and just to see the work he, he did do. Um, did a lot of research on how, how we acquired it, where we acquired it from, on all the other box cars throughout the country, and everything else. He uh, was very into the history of all of it. I do remember him telling me at one point that when they opened up that boxcar, when they first acquired it, the things that were inside of it, it was packed from top to bottom, end to end, that you couldn't get anything else in there if you wanted to. Um, there was so much stuff in it that there was stuff left on the docks back in Paris because they couldn't get any more into the boxcar. But uh, yeah, a, a lot of the, the metals or the symbols you see along the side, he made himself. He researched them all and he, he redid them all, a lot of them himself. Um, the he, uh, yeah, he, he was very proud of that boxcar. He would go around the state and do talks on it. He'd go over to the, the Nampa um, airport over there and he would give lectures on it as often as he could. The video you are seeing here is one that I actually videotaped myself back in February of 99. Um, I did that one as well as one earlier from the Capitol building. Um, but I was very proud to watch, watch it all transpire and watch it all unfold. I uh, used to have a lot of the plaques he's putting up there. I used to have a lot of them, but I don't know what's ever happened to any of them. I lost my dad back in May of uh, 2018. So it's, it's been a rough road trying to keep up with his legend, <laughs> basically, as I want to say. He was, I was very proud of him, and I was very proud of the accomplishments of things he did. Um, but of all things, that boxcar was his baby, his pride and joy. Um, but I, like I said, I <laughs> wasn't able to talk very long, but I will turn this over, back over to JC or to Steve, whichever, and thank you for listening. All right. Now, uh, we always videotape the Captivating Conversations lectures uh, so that they can be available on YouTube as a digital resource for people who couldn't make it tonight or people who want to um, utilize them in other ways. And so uh, we really appreciate you guys coming out for this and, uh, and being a, a great audience for uh, what we can take in about this. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Okay, so I'm here for the 48 I'm not able to represent, right? I was going to say, I keep waiting for them to get me a hat, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> what hat size you got? <laughs> Good evening. My name is Steve North. I am a member of the 48 uh, here locally. I am a former U.S. Navy veteran. Um, oh, I'm a former a lot of things. I shouldn't say that. But anyway, I'm a member of the, of the uh, Historical Society on a couple other areas. I also work with the History Day to the schools, and I volunteer out here. Um, what is the 48 Society? 
La Societe de Quarant Homes y Weep Chavo. Um, if you look up on the, well, you can't see from here, but on the, on the train car, it says Homes 40 Chavo 8. That means 40 men or 8 horses. That's what they would put in these boxcars. <coughs> 40 and 8 societies committed to charitable and patriotic aims. Our purpose is to uphold and defend the United States Constitution of the United States. I worded that wrong, didn't I? To promote the well-being of veterans, their widows, widowers, and orphans, to actively participate in selective charitable endeavors, which include, among others, programs that promote child welfare and nurses training. We do offer nurses scholarships. We're working on one now. So if anybody asks you tomorrow, what does the 48 do? Bunch of old guys sitting around doing things with nurses, right? Okay. This was my old home. I always have to show this picture. My job was one of these crazy little guys in the white shirt way up there. He don't want to deal with the flags. My office was those three little windows you see right up there. I got to do the flashing lights, the semaphore, all the flag waving. And when I wasn't doing that, I was one level below on the bridge playing with charts, navigations. Uh, I did that for three years on that boat. I love that thing. But that was my biggest part of my Navy history. I won't do that yet. Um, I grew up in Salt Lake City. <coughs> and most of the things we did on weekends is my dad would like to take us out and do tours around Utah. That was how I, how I learned about history. Uh, every weekend it was someplace different. One weekend it was Promontory Point, Utah. Now that's an old picture, of course. You know, I was not in this picture. Um, many people would think I was. These are the two ships. This is the um, Union Pacific number 60 and Central Pacific's number 19, which is also known as Jupiter. These are the two trains that met at Promontory Point over the Golden Spike and brought the two railroads together. This is my introduction to trains. And to this day, I still have a fascination with them. Uh, the Golden Spike itself was donated by a guy by the name of David Hughes, um, which he took back after the ceremony. It now sits in the museum, the Stanford Museum of Arts in um, California. Um, there was four Golden Spikes, I didn't know that. There was, a, there was the golden one that went there. There was one, a, a gold one and a silver one from Arizona. And there was a silver one from Nevada. But I'll play the part of that. But if you ever get a chance to go from here, it's four hours, give or take an hour. Um, awesome place to go. This car, 48 cars. Uh, made around 1850. Designed as the original clown cars, as you can see. Um, its whole purpose was taking men back and forth to the front lines in France during World War I. You see the little box up there on top? It says, Ohm's 40, Chavo 8. 40 men or 8 horses. Not at the same time. That would be too much to ask, too much of a mess. <coughs> okay. These are Liberty Road markers. They are going from... Anyway, around 1850, it was the PLM line, Paris, Paris, Lyon, and Mediterranean line. Um, Liberty Road Mark, these run from St. Louis to Nice, which was right after D-Day in September 16, 1944, and the last one was the 10th September of 44 in Bastogne. Paratroopers, St. Lowe liberated in um, 165 of July. Typo, I believe. Uh, that's where Gen <laughs> it's 16 July. That's where General Patton launched his his uh, crusades um, towards Avranche. Um Germans occupied a fortress there in Saint-Servan, Verdun, 
American depots, ended up in Bastogne, which is the last one. That was 1,145 kilometers or 3,190 miles in six months, seven months, four months, I can't count. Anyway, two of these, now these are not the big ones. They're, they're, they were only about this tall. These were some of the ones they've been refurbished and made look nice. Um, some of them made their way back to the United States. One of them is in the backyard of General Walker uh, in his barbecue pit. The other one is perfectly preserved at the museum at Idaho State University. <clears throat> um, after World War II was over, they had decided that uh, there was an, um, a Quaker, Amish Quaker, whatever you want to call him, journalist by the name of Drew Pearson out of Los Angeles. He got together with some people and decided we need to repay France and help rebuild France and other European areas. So they started the friendship train. Uh, it was kind of part of the Marshall Plan that Truman had started with the 80th Congress to help the citizen food and supply because Russia was doing some stuff. But this is what really started it all. Um, this original plan was 80 cars full of food, 80 ro railroad cars full of food and stuff to get to New York and send over on a ship. What it ended up was by the time it left California, it had 120 cars. And as it, way it made its way across the country, and it pretty much went straight across the middle, it made several stops because trains were coming from north and the south to meet it. When it got there, they'd meet up, join together. By the time it got to New York, it had around 700 cars full of food, equipment, gas, things like that. <coughs> I'm not sure what those are. They look to me like those big giant searchlights, you know? Um, I'm assuming for lights, for whatever reason, in some place for France to put their bat signal, maybe. Um, you'll also notice there's also, you can't see because of the color, but there's a French flag and there's also an Italian flag on there. Italy was only mentioned a few times in most of the research that I did. Um, the second ship that left port went to Italy, the rest of them, went over to France, but we'll cover that in a minute. Um, yeah. Anyway, it ended up 700 cars worth $40 million worth of stuff. Um, oops, I didn't went that way already. This is one of the ones that came out of Pennsylvania. This is a refurbished version of it. You can buy these, believe it or not, online. You can get a whole set of these. Uh, at least the primary ones, but you notice it had the Italian flag and the French flag on it. There were several of them like that. This one was made, the carload of raisins from Fresno, California. Um, there was one from junior high school students full of evaporated milk. And if you ever tasted evaporated milk in junior high schools, I can see why they want to get that out of the school. Uh, Arkansas rice. But there were 700 boxcars of this stuff. People from all over the country donated. And I think the thing that amazes me the most is the fact that when it got there, it wasn't 700 boxcars full of food and it wasn't $40 million, is that we were just coming out of a war ourselves. And we're trying to rebuild our country, yet we're willing to donate and help people from a country that people we're never gonna see. And to me, that says more than whatever you wanna send over there. It's the hearts of the American people. And they still like that today. Uh, when the trains got to New York, they'd have to take a trip across the Hudson River like this to get over to the yards so that they can be loaded on the ships. And this is where I wish I had a picture of the ship, but I couldn't get it. Um, unless I paid a whole lot of money for Washington News or any of those kind of places. But it took them four days to start it and several months to finish it to load everything by hand because you couldn't put the, the train cars on the, the ships because the railways over in Europe have a smaller gauge rail. I'm gonna assume that's because of the metric system. But if you look at the one here, it's narrower than it is than you would see out on our train sites. So they had to load it all by hand. Took them quite a while. Um, all the stevedores, dock workers, every place else donated their time. They were not paid for all their work. First ship to leave was the SS American Leader. It left in December of 1947. Following week was the SX Iseria, which left for Italy. And that's the only other mention to Italy I could find. 
I could not find where it got there. I could not find what happened to it after that, and I did try to do the best I could. Um, the rest of the food and stuff went aboard the American Banker, the De Graz, and the SS Chinoy. And the Chinoy we'll talk about again in a minute. Um, once it got over there, I gotta learn how to use this thing. Uh, once it got over there, um, it went up and it unloaded, it went up and down the rails of France, unloading it in most of the schools. Children got about 64% of it. Um, <clears throat> there was a warehouse, I want to say just north of Paris that had a fire, uh, it lost about 30,000 tons of food. And about the time that the SS Chinois got there, was able to replace that food, so it really wasn't a total loss. Um, after, about a year afterwards, there was two French veterans, Louis Cast, a veteran of both wars, and an Andre Picard, a veteran of World War II. Um, they were the president and general delegate of the National Federation of Veterans and victim of war of the railways in the Union of France. They're the ones that got the idea to put the train together. And I want to back up here just a second. This one here, I put this in here for a reason. This is the French people unloading a US tomb for an unknown soldier in France. Uh, they used pretty much the thing that everybody else did. They had a group of three or four or five graves they used, and they picked one, they used one to pick for France, and uh, that's where they got it. That's how they got an unknown soldier there. And when they came over in World War II, when the ship came over, the first one, there was a wreath kind of, I guess you'd call it a wreath set up, was going to the unknown soldier in Arlington. President Truman or Bess Truman, neither one of them would go to the ceremony. They said something about some problem with France or that she was upset with the guy that was coming over, whatever reason, and everyone was figured out. So they had some horticulturists to set up the wreath our honor, and it sets just a little off to the side of the actual tomb of the unknown soldier. Um, Britain has theirs pretty much the same way, not pretty Great Britain, England, whoever. Um, they took a group of candidates, four or five people, or whatever, and they picked one, they have their tomb of the unknown soldier over there too, so everybody's got one. So, I missed a ship here, where's my ship? Hello. Oh, I got it out of frame a little bit, I'm sorry. Anyway, so let's talk about the rail car. This is maintaining our brotherhood. This little picture here is the main logo of the rail car. It usually sits on the front of the rail car here. And it was also on every gift tag that came attached to something when it came over. Um, it's very simple, a, tr a train with on the pilot of it, you've got the three poppies, red, white, or excuse me, blue, white, and red. I gotta say them in the right order. Um, and they represent the flowers flown in Flanders Field, which is a resting place for most American lives, uh, people that were killed in, during World War I. And about every Memorial Day service you have around, you'll read a poem called In Flanders Field. Very heart, very heart pulling. Um, but I won't get into that. Um, but I, you mentioned poppies and talk about the prison. Uh, we have two American Legion prisoners, Amer two American Legion posts out at the prison, and they make our poppies for us. So they do a lot of poppies. Okay, the gift guidelines for the American thing. When we sent them, it was food, whatever we can get to help them rebuild. When they were sending stuff back, they had guidelines. Donations could not be any, should not be anything necessary to rebuilding the French economy. Specifically, no food shall be sent. The gifts should have a typical French character they will call mind of France, its traditions, its charms, its culture. They will be, for example, historical, artistic, regional, folkloric artifacts. They might include gasware, glassware, crystalware, porcelain, artistic items, leather goods, enamels, goldsmithing, bronzing, ceramics, potteries, carved wooden objects, paintings, etchings, embroidery, lace, tapestries, headdresses, and provincial costumes, nativity scenes, stained glass, bells, articles of Paris, and specimens of French production and crafts so famous in the world. 
So they were pretty much open with what they sent. Um, <coughs> French President Ariel, Ar 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 a U R yeah, Ariel will work. Um, he donated porcelain vases from a French plant in Severs. He had 49 of them, one for each state. Um, there were 49 wedding dresses, one for each state. I had a little letter to send it back with a, a picture of the person who wore it so they could have that celebrated. Um, there were shell casings and porcelains and, and all kinds of artings. There were 49 of each sent to the state, so there are several of them like that. Some just carloads full of whatever they could send. This is them unloading, this is them loading the cars. That's what it looked like. Were the people of France happy to send us stuff back? I think so. But that's me. But yeah, they wanted to get something in the car. And there was little tiny things. There was, there was uh, uh, ashtrays, tapestry, dolls, uh, doily laces embroidered really nice and pretty. Okay, came over on the Merci America. Actually, it was called the Magellan, but that's what was painted on the side. Uh, made it into New York Harbor and sat there for three days. Had to wait for the other ship to come by. Um, had all the French dignitaries to come in because every box car that went out had French dignitaries on it. So it sat in the, and they knew it too. They were out there watching it. Boats are going around it. Um, they lined up for ticker tape parades in New York and they had big banquets and all the rich people got together and did that kind of stuff. They were unloaded onto box cars or trains. Um, like I said, because of the narrow gauge of the rail, they couldn't put them on the railways. And that's how they went around the country, just like that. And so there's our fancy little car. Focus is off a little bit, I apologize. This says French box car, but I do not where it come from. Some of these unfortunately had no names on them, but I tried to find it. And they got a whole bunch of them over here, which might help you. And some of these pictures that I have are different from the ones that they have over there because of the way they were taken care of. This one is one very well taken care of. Um, you see the, the presidential seal up on top um, is one we're trying to get replaced. Now we're trying to get these rest of these replaced. There's a total of 40 for these. So we're trying to get some prices together and do some things together. Hopefully we can raise some money to complete our car so that Tom's work is, you know, can be completed. And you can come help us put them on. <laughs> She's back there going, I don't think so. <laughs> um, Mississippi, a little worse for wear. Some of these unfortunately got by. There's 43 of the 49 left. Some of them have been scrapped. Some of them were, there's one stolen out of Illinois on how you steal trains, but you did. <clears throat> Delaware, this was the American Legion of the 48. Um, taking it down the street to wherever it was going. So they're all done in ceremonies. Now there's Utah's. Um, this is sitting at the Railway Museum now in Ogden. Picture over there shows it was at Memory Grove in Salt Lake and a lot worse for wear, but it was pulled up, refurbished, and that's where it sits now. Florida. Now, a little trivia question. It's only a short fence and it's straight. Why is that? If you go to Johnson Space Center, they got those big tall fences and the fences go backwards. Come on, somebody's gotta have an answer. So alligators can't get over them. <laughs> if the, the, when they were originally put up and they, went, and they went over like that, crocodiles and alligators can get over it, fall in the, in the yard and that's it. Now they go backwards so the alligators can't get into them. Just a little tidbit of information. Worth and Steve's School of Useless Knowledge. Uh, Arkansas, did I go to play tennis? No, there's Hawaii now. That looks to me like it's a junkyard. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's gonna be refurbished or if it's gonna end up that way, but that's where it at, at is about, uh, I wanna say this was a 99 picture, 2000. And unfortunately, when they came over, there was 49 states. Hawaii had to share theirs with Washington, D.C. Washington DC got most of the stuff out of the inside, but Hawaii did get some, but they got the train. Arkansas. <coughs> New Hampshire put theirs inside, which I thought was kind of cool. 
And this was done by Voyager 599, so the 40 and 8 control that one. There's good old Louisiana. And this sits in the capital of Baton Rouge. I had the pleasure of seeing this um, six years ago. Okay. This is the Wings Victory Statue of Somatracy, or also the victory god of Nike, N-I-K-E. Um, this was discovered around 190 B.C. or 120, depending on what you read. Um, the original sits on this, the grand staircase at the Louvre. The copy of it is on display at the Rotunda State Capitol. It's by an unknown French artist. So this was one of the things that came out of our car. Nevada had another nice statue. It's a big, tall guy with kids hanging around him and stuff. The original one weighed about 5,000 pounds, um, but that's a plaster copy they got in Nevada. And I saw a picture of it, but I couldn't get it to print out, but I had it on here. <sighs> Little French cuirassier helmet. I think these are the ones that they use for um, ceremonies and stuff like that. Okay. Hand-painted pottery was the image of landscape with a man in the foreground and buildings in the background. And these came from several different sites. And I'll say that for a reason, and you'll understand here in just a moment. This is the bugle used to sound the ceasefire that ended World War. I'd love to have this in here. Unfortunately, it's hanging up in the Indiana War Museum. Um, February 13th, 1949. I think it's crazy. They still had that, too. Uh, porcelain bowl came out of this. Now, you see the little numbers up on the top. Historical Society requires that I have those up there. 1939.3.4, this is their list. I was able to get a list of, a partial list of stuff that was in there with all these numbers, and I was able to get some pictures the same way. Um, but I had to make sure those numbers were there to represent, okay? Now this one had a series of them, 0.27 to 0.34, and they were a series of dolls. This looks like a, I wanna say a French farmer, maybe. Whoops. Knock it off. This is a grotto. Somebody had made a church thing out of a cave. Uh, you can see the guy sitting here, kneeling, praying, whatever. Uh, the altar and stuff up in here. Little statue up there of the Mother Mary. This was made out of a cave. I thought that was kind of cool. Shell casings. Um, there were plenty of those around there. People found them, collected them made uh, shell casings, sculptures out of them, okay? Um, and there's quite a few of those come back this way. More dolls. Sorry, some of these pictures are kind of weak, but <laughs> some of the, uh, the work on the dolls, the eyes look like they move and they follow. Very, very intricate details. Uh, Baker, okay, looks like she's praying, farmer. There's very small statuettes. Little puppy, it was knitted. Matador and a figurine. That took a lot of work, that's bronze. 1949.3.45 <coughs> is that one. You can look those up at the archives. They don't have them anymore. Unfortunately, a lot of them, when the train first came over, were taken, stolen, lost, whatever. So the lim they're very limited what we have left that we can see. That was a nice little coaster. A lot of good handiwork in that one. Ashtray. Little floor to leaves in them. I thought that was kind of neat. This was one of the ribbons that came up there. Association National. De Croix de Guerrero. You speak more French than I do, don't you? Anybody? No? But this is one of the medals they had over there. Um, if you look at the medals that we have on the side of our hats, it's kind of along the same line with the, the way it hangs down. I have my hats out of shape, so that's a little bit of a different matter. Okay, um, next one. This one I like. Cloth doll with a painted face, black velvet eyes, hair made of yellow thread, shoes are black velvet, 
pink ribbon shoelaces made of gold silk and blue velvet apron. And somebody did that, had it on their shelf at home, and says, oh, let's donate that one. The French were very creative people. And I think my last picture, this is a shell casing that somebody had made up. Um, <coughs> I don't speak French. I couldn't even begin to tell you what it says. But there were a few left around. Now, I was, my original intention was to ask questions as we went through it, and I didn't do that. You kind of got lucky. So, anybody have any questions now? Comments? Moans, groans, gripes? Yes, sir. You're wearing a chapeau. Yes, I am wearing a chapeau. And as a matter of fact, that would be five dollars. There were one of the, I know. My French is. At, let me explain that comment. At our meetings, we're supposed to speak as much French as possible. We do at our, at our post, our, our vote there, is we put in $5 in a little kitty beforehand. Um, so that way, instead of everybody doesn't speak French, you got to pay a little fine. We just pay the fine up front, and that's it. And that builds up our kitty throughout the year to do whatever we want to do with. Um, um, so the, the, the photographs you showed us were artifacts from all over the country, right? They're not just about the ones on this slide here are from the Idaho market. Now, there was, there was one or two that didn't have the little numbers on them. Those were taken from Arizona, North Dakota, and those kind of things. If you go online and you can look up mercycar.org, um, Mercy Boxcar, Mercy Real Car, however you want to do it, you can get into each one by state. And to which get each one by state, you can look at different pictures. So each there's, there's a ton of stuff out there. Though they're in the archives here, but they're not, you cannot go physically see them. They're, they're in the archives, yes. Um, yeah, I, there is so much, all this research that I was doing, there's so many pictures that I'm going, oh, I want to show that, I want to show that, and I click on it, I got to can't, unless I want to get a subscription to the Washington News or the New York World Report or Pinterest or one of those kind of things, and you know, I'm not going to do that, sorry. I like you guys, I love doing this, but. I don't have that deep in pockets. I'm married. <clears throat> what else? Anybody else got any questions? Yes, sir. Steve, um, why why were some of them painted like uh, the other states painted red and stuff like that? Did they come in different colors? Or what, what, I'm sorry. What was painted red? Like the box cars. Did they come in different colors? They pretty much no. They pretty much all came over in like a grayish kind of color. That's what they originally formatted in, or a color similar to this. Um, as they were refurbished along the way, yeah, people changed the colors a little bit here, a different shade of blue, different shade of gray, different shade of rust, if you saw some of them. Um, some of them I just, like, oh, I'm not Ohio's. One of them just, all you can see left is, is the metal frame and the wheels, that the rest of it's all gone, all rusted off, and they got sold for scrap, so. And that's really kind of unfortunate, because there's a lot of history in these things. Um, when you, when you try to get into the history of some of this stuff, you can only go so far, unfortunately. Um, and I think I just hit the tip of the iceberg. And I was, I've been doing this now for a couple of weeks, working quite a bit on this. And I didn't, you know, yeah, I've got a pile of papers at home I was reading. I could have brought and, and talked for three hours, but no, I wasn't gonna do that to you guys. Because the test is only 10 questions long. You know, I just wanna be nice. But Don forgot to bring the test, so you got out of that. Yes, ma'am. So the, 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 the Nelson trains arrived in New York, and then they were dispersed across the country. Yes, the, 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 the Mercy train ship, the Magellan Big Dock in New York, and from there they were went down, a little ticker tape paraded, all that kind of stuff, and they got loaded on um, train cars and went everywhere else where they had to go. No, there is a plaque on the side of each one. The, the French decided where they were going to go, yes. I'm sorry. Right, they said this one goes to Idaho. Right. A, I think the plaque that's on there was, was put on after that. But yes, each one was designated where it wanted to go. Yeah, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to picture French people figuring out. The they had a map, dartboard, I guess. I don't know. 
That would have been my guess. Yes, dear. Forty Nate is a national organization. Uh, we were founded by the by veterans returning from World War One in 1919. Um, and the Forty Nate was kind of it was because kind of out of this. But yes, we we are uh, invitation only. You cannot just walk up and join. You have to be asked to join. It's kind of like a an honor society, I guess you'd say, for veterans. The gentleman here in the yellow jacket was a national representative at one time. Uh, Sue Chef de Garm. National Vice President. National Vice President, thank you. Yes, See, I think of Sue Chef, I think of the guy cutting the vegetables in the kitchen. So <clears throat> Don is part of our Voltaire here. Um, I'd asked a couple of the people to join, but unfortunately they didn't make it. Anybody else? Si, sí, senor. I will say, as I travel around and talk to the states that I went to, some of the organizations, 49 especially, is trying to uh, restore the cars, mm -hmm. but because other people have their fingers on them, it's hard to get all of them and get them restored. Um, well, it's not, it's not so much restoring the car that's the part. You've got the politicians got to get involved in it, and the stuff inside is probably long gone. But yeah, there are a lot of groups still trying to restore some of the pictures you saw here and some of the ones you see here are not yet finished. There's still more being done. And they, so they, they just finished restoring a few years ago, Wyoming. And it was in bad shape when it got restored. It was mm -hmm. removed and under shelter and that's a big thing. Uh, I know a group in California wants to get the car moved from Fresno, but oh, there has been. Yeah, and Fresno's now has been restored. It's got a pretty good site. So. Who's about it now? The last the last thing I saw, it had been restored and put in some museum somewhere down there. Not California. Not California? Okay, see, I. Okay. Well, unfortunately, when you're doing studying history, history is belongs to the guy who wrote it, right? So. What I hear here, or what I read in another book, I, I, something else I read said, no, that wasn't the way it was. And so you never know. You take what you get. Next question. Yes, ma'am. The medallions of the different provinces on the side, I'll bet none of those, I'll bet none of those are original on any other side. Uh, well, not uh, probably not. No, you can buy those. It costs twenty five hundred dollars to get the whole set of forty. Um, I am trying to work up a deal with JC, and I'll give him some information where we can pick up some extra ones of the ones that we don't have. Uh, we're missing. Let's see, I think two or three on this side, and a bunch more on the other side. So if you haven't looked, this side says French, and the other side is English, which says Gratitude Tree. <clears throat> but yeah, there's the one where the H is up on top. Is where the uh, uh, presidential logo goes, American Eagle. The one on the bottom on the right, other lower corner is another one of the uh, the shields, but there's 20 on each side. And then you got the Merci, Merci train with the flowers and stuff on it that goes in the front. So yeah, there's plenty missing, and I'd love to get that thing restored. I think it'd be awesome. I was going to say, I, uh, Tom restored pretty much all of those. I don't think any of them were with the, Mer the boxcar when it moved over here. No, he did. He did. She was telling me that he did a lot of them, yeah. But they are available. I said, I'll get you the, I'll get you the information. Okay. I would like to thank this. I'm going to say I forgot your name. Karen, thank you, because I'm old. Um, for what you did. And I appreciate you guys coming out and listening to us. We're here every Saturday from noon to four. Uh, one of us is here helping, pushing people through and talking about and I'd still like to see this little car running, but you know, can't do that. So, if nobody else has any other questions, thank you for coming. Food's in the back, and have yourself a great night. <laughs>